What's up guys, welcome back to this series on reinforcement learning. In this video, we'll continue our discussion of deep Q networks and focus in on an important technique called experience replay that is utilized during the training process of a DQN. So let's get to it. Last time, we covered each piece of the architecture that makes up a typical deep Q network. Now, before we can move on to discussing exactly how a DQN is trained, we're first going to explain the concepts of experience replay and replay memory. With deep Q networks, we often utilize this technique called experience replay during training. With experience replay, we store the agent's experiences at each time step in a dataset called the replay memory. At time t, the agent's experience E sub t is defined as this tuple. This tuple contains the state of the environment, the action taken from that state, the reward given to the agent as a result of the previous state action pair, and the next state of the environment. This tuple indeed gives us a summary of the agent's experience at time t. All of the agent's experiences at each time step over all episodes played by the agent are stored in the replay memory. Well, actually, in practice, we'll usually see the replay memory set to some finite size limit big N, and therefore it will only store the last big N experiences. This replay memory dataset is actually what we'll randomly be sampling from to train the network. The act of gaining experience and sampling from the replay memory that stores these experiences is actually what experience replay is. But why would we choose to train the network on random samples from replay memory rather than just providing the network with the sequential experiences as they occur in the environment? A key reason for using replay memory is to break the correlation between consecutive samples. If the network learned only from consecutive samples of experiences as they occurred sequentially in the environment, the samples would be highly correlated and would therefore lead to inefficient learning. Taking random samples from replay memory breaks this correlation. All right, we now have the idea of experience replay down. From last time, we should also have an understanding of a general deep Q network architecture and the data that the network accepts and the output from the network. As a quick refresher, remember that the network is passed a state from the environment, and in turn, the network outputs the Q values for each action that can be taken from that state. Let's now bring all of this information in together with Experience Replay to see how they fit in with each other. Before training starts, we first initialize the replay memory dataset Big D to capacity Big N. So the replay memory will hold N total experiences. Next, we initialize the network with random weights. We've covered weight initialization in the Deep Learning Fundamental series, so if you need a refresher on this topic, check that out. The exact same concepts we covered there also applies for DeepQ network weight initialization. Next, for each episode, we initialize the starting state of the episode. In our previous discussion, we talked about states, including the starting state, being a frame of raw pixels from a game screen as an example. All right, now for each time step within the episode, we either explore the environment and select a random action, or we exploit the environment and select the greedy action for the given state that gives the highest Q value. Remember, this is the exploration exploitation trade-off that we discussed in detail in a previous video. We then execute the selected action in an emulator. So for example, if the selected action was to move right, then from an emulator where the actions were being executed in the actual game, the agent would actually move right. We then observe the reward given for this action, and we also observe the next state of the environment. We then store the entire experience tuple, including the state, the action, the reward, and the next state in replay memory. So here's a quick summary of what we have so far. We first initialize the replay memory capacity. We then initialize the network with random weights. Then for each episode, we initialize the starting state of the episode. Then for each time step within the episode, we select an action, either via exploration or exploitation. We then execute the selected action in an emulator and observe the reward and the next state. We then store the entire experience in replay memory. In the next video, we're going to discover how exactly we sample from replay memory during training, 
as well as all the other details we need to know about training a DQN. Please leave a thumbs up to let us know you're learning, and don't forget to check out the corresponding blog for this video on DeepBlizzard.com, as well as the DeepBlizzard Hivemind for exclusive perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence, and I'll see you in the next one. All of natural intelligence and artificial intelligence is about problem solving. And in AI, we are trying to build general problem solvers that can solve not only one little problem here and one little problem there, but many, many different problems that are practically relevant in this initially unknown environment we are living in. So we want to build machines and robots and agents that learn to deal with basically arbitrary, initially unknown environments and then learn to solve pretty much arbitrary problems within these environments.